record so you guys can watch it later and replay if you want. Say hi to everybody who's popping in, and we're going to get started. So today we're making one of the mother sauces. Uh, last week we did a red sauce. Mother sauces are comprised of five basic sauces, two of which are very similar. But we have a red sauce, which is the marinara. We have a bechamel sauce, which is a cream sauce. We have a balute, which is a uh, roux with stock in it, which is very similar to the cream sauce. And we have a uh, espanol sauce, which is a brown sauce. And we have a hollandaise sauce. So those are all scheduled for later. And uh, you'll see how easy they are to make in your own home and what you can do with them to change up what you're eating, your style of eating, and make it more like a restaurant style. So we're going to get started. And I'm going to turn the heat on in my induction burner. And we're going to put in some butter. You can make uh, a roux with oil. You can make a roux with a butter substitute. I have used coconut oil before. And it all depends on the flavor that you're going to get and, and you know how you enjoy those flavors. Because if you don't really like the taste of coconut oil, it's going to overpower it. Uh, you can use margarine. You can use one of those new soy um, kind of alternative butters. I have some of that in the refrigerator, too. Uh, this is a just a small saucepan, and it's probably about mm, three quarts, I would say. And I have a smaller one here that I'm actually going to be used to. So I put in four ounces of butter, so that'll give you an idea. All right, so four ounces. The typical menu or recipe for a cream sauce of, of any kind that we're making like here would be an equal amount of butter and flour. So if you were thinking along the terms of a gallon, it would be uh, a pound of butter, a pound of flour, and a gallon of milk. Okay, and that's your cream sauce. All right, we're not making that much because that's kind of a large portion, so I've cut it down into quarters. And this should give us a reasonable amount, but you know, depending on what you're making, you could even make less. So all I'm doing is melting the butter first. Like I said, you can use margarine, you can use an alternative butter, and then I'm going to add in my four ounces of flour. Stir it around. Now the rule of thumb, if I wasn't going to measure it out ahead of time, would be to put in enough flour so that the shine kind of goes off of the butter. And this, this could hold a little bit more, but I don't want it to be a super thick. I'm going to turn this down a little too. Turn this down on low because we don't want it to burn because that'll affect the color of your sauce. All right, so we've got this and I'm just going to let it cook a little bit. Now, you can make a roux and you can use a roux to thicken just about anything. Sometimes I'll put a roux in a vegetable soup because I want it to have a little more body and a little more thickness to it. So that's not a bad thing to do either. And you could just let this cook a little. And you always want to let your roux cook so the flour cooks out that raw flavor that it has. Otherwise, your flour is going to have a, uh, a like an uncooked taste. You want to smell it. And as you start to smell it a little bit like bread, that's about the time that it's done as you start to smell the flour actually cooking. So it doesn't really take a lot. And I said, they could add this to sauces. Uh, at this point, if I wanted to make a gravy out of it, and I had pan sauces that were coming out of my oven with a roast, with a turkey, I could add them directly into this, all the juice, and that would be making a volute. Okay, so a volute is the roux, without any cream in it. And I'm actually gonna put a little bit more flour in there because it just looks a little loose to me. I can get some more flour out. And it could be that I'm using a very fine grade of flour too. I'm using a double O. So and that's the first time I've used it to make a roux. That's a little better. But you can actually add more flour into this. When I worked in the restaurant, yes, you can use roux like corn flour as a thickener and it'll actually do better than cornstarch because it won't clump up. And you can use a milk substitute as well, Ed. Yeah, anything will work in here. You can just use water. I said that's the volute. And then what I do most of the time when I make one of these is I will use stock and then I will enhance it with the dairy product. Then I will put the cream in 
Now, technically, that's like a bastardized sauce. It's, it's either one or the other in traditional terms, but that's pretty much how I make them. If I'm going to do it, is I'll, I'll use mostly stock, and then I use a little bit of milk or cream. In this case, I've got half and half today because I didn't have any cream, and uh, I don't drink milk anymore, so I don't have that either. But we're going to use half and half to make it a little richer anyway. But you don't necessarily need it to be all dairy. It could be stock and then just a little dairy to finish it off to improve the color, improve the texture, improve the taste. Okay. So after it's cooked, let this cook just a little bit. And I've got some potatoes on the stove. So that's going to kind of act as my stock today. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a cream soup. That's pretty much this is done. You know, it's the roux is cooked. Oh, and I started to tell you about if you wanted to make this roux a little heavier, you could actually cook it, take it out, put it in a bowl, and keep it for a while, for a few days to use as a thickener. So at the restaurant, we would cook up a bunch of roux, roll them into little balls, and if we needed something to thicken something up, we could just throw a couple of those in. This, In this condition, it's called a slurry. Okay, so it is your roux, but it's a wet roux. So it's, you can see it's a slurry because it's liquid. It's still a little bit liquid. And this adds very easily into soups and sauces to help it um, thicken up. Okay, so that's like I said, I'll add it to, sometimes I'll even add it to a noodle soup if I want it to hold the noodles a little bit better rather than cornstarch. Because cornstarch tends to give it like that really shiny look too. And this is going to make it a little cloudier. So you have to decide. And this isn't on catch, Ed, but it is being recorded, so you can watch it here, and I'll also upload it to YouTube, too. All right, so let me grab my other pan. And in here, I just cook some potatoes, and you can see they're not completely soft. But if you want to, at this point, make a soup, make a cream soup, and say you had spinach, you had broccoli, you had cauliflower, whatever you had that you wanted to, to make in it of a vegetable like that, you would cook it down and you would let it get soft and cook for a while. This could have probably have cooked a little bit longer, but this will do fine because I don't mind having a few chunks in my soup. Now, as it is, this will be a very fine, thin soup, but you could not thin, um, not as chunky except for the potatoes. But if I was making a soup and I knew I wanted to make it a soup, I would start with some celery and onions in the bottom of this too. So you could do that. So now I'm going to add in the potato juice that I had and the potatoes. So that's going to act as my stock. And then I'm just going to mix this in. And this is a volute. And you'll see how it's getting really thick. It's almost looking like mashed potatoes. All right, that is kind of what happens when you add hot stock to a roux. All right, and it's always suggested that you add hot stock into the roux rather than a cold one. Liquid just disappeared. Yeah, and I always said it looks like, now it looks like mashed potatoes. Okay, that is your volute. Now at this point, I'm going to add in some more stock. And I'm actually using chicken stock because I like the flavor of that but you could use a vegetable stock. And at this point, you don't want to add a lot in. You want to put enough in so you can mix it around easily without it getting all messy on you. The rest of the roux out of the center of this thing. And you can use a finer whip if you want. This is kind of a heavy whip. And you'll find the point where when you're starting to add it in that you know you've had enough. So that's why we don't put too much in one time. So this would be a good sauce. Like I said, this is this, uh, like kind of a soup because I put potatoes in it. But if you wanted to do a veg, a, um, a volute, you could use this for a sauce for a lasagna. You could use this in any vegetable, cream vegetable you wanted. This is actually without the potatoes in it and just the chicken stock would be like a supreme sauce, which is something we used to use, you know, ages ago, uh, served with chicken. This is how I make, you know, without the potatoes again, when I do my turkey gravy, I start with the roux and then I add the hot turkey stock into it. 
and then I beef it up with a little chicken stock if I don't have enough. And it is going to continue to thicken as it cooks and as it heats. The chicken stock is room temperature. Ed, uh, you could heat it up. If you're careful, you can put it in at room temperature. And you see it really wasn't that difficult. If you put it in and it's not as hot as it was when we added the hot water with the potatoes, it's not going to thicken up as fast. What will happen is it will it'll actually blend in a little better because you'll mix everything good. It won't hot, be hot and clump up. And then as it gets hot, it will thicken. So you just need to be a little careful about how much you're putting in. So that's why they want you to put it in hot because it's easier to gauge where your finished product is. So again, a little at a time. All right, so this is basically without being finished seasoned with some salt, some pepper, uh, a, a cream of potato soup. All right, it's nice and fine. It's got to cook. It has to cook for a little more. You know, it's not done being cooked and the flavor won't all be there. It's going to taste. It's actually not bad. It needs a little pepper. And at this point, let's say I'm making a cream soup or I want to make a cheese sauce out of it without the rest of the dairy. Okay, so you could put some cheese in here, or if I wanted to just add a little flavor to my potato soup, let's get some pepper. Add a little bit of pepper to it. And I like black pepper. I'm not a fan of white pepper. It just doesn't quite taste like pepper to me. I know every professional would tell you, no, use white pepper so you can't see it. Well, I don't mind seeing it. I would season at the end because that's when you're going to be tasting it. If you're going to add salt and pepper, add it at the end because you can always add more in. But if you put too much in in the beginning, then you, you may have too much in that you can't take out. And your only option of that be to make it, to add more to it. Now, this is a fine soup the way it is. But if I want to add just a little bit of more body to it and texture and flavor, this is where I put in a little bit of dairy product. And you see, that's all I, I added was maybe two, three tablespoons, quarter of a cup. And that's going to improve the color. Okay. Color is going to improve the mouth feel and it's going to improve the flavor. Okay, so this is basically done. Now, had I used broccoli, had I used spinach, it would have gone in and the vegetable would have dispersed. So you would have seen a little bit more of the vegetable. If you want to make a chowder, this is still basically the same way. You would just start with your vegetables in the bottom of it uh, with a mirepoix, with celery, carrots, and onions uh, in a chowder, and then just build it from here. Again, stock, and then adding in a little bit of dairy product at the end. And again, just for, for color. Ed, they have a, a culinary coconut cream that's that's supposed to be pretty good. I haven't tried it yet, but it's um, supposed to be a little thicker and a little brighter white, so it helps perk things up like this, too. So that is a velouté turned into a bit of a potato uh, soup. Okay, so that was that easy peasy to do. It took us not that long. It's going to simmer. You know, you want to let it sit for a little while and cook so the flavor enhances because you want it to be flavorful, you want it to taste good. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and move it over. Get rid of that potato. All right, now we got another pan on here. I'm not going to use quite as much butter because this is a smaller pan. We're not going to make that much. Let's put in about half of the butter. And again, if you wanted to make more volume, if I'd added more flour, to that roux, it would have been thicker, it would have taken more liquid, and it would have had a greater volume of soup. So depending upon what, how much volume you're making to, depends on how the roux is built. Uh, if you let the brew, like if I was making, when I'm making an Espanol, I could let the roux brown a little bit because the sauce is gonna be brown. But if I am making a white sauce, a cream sauce, I don't want it to overcook, I don't want it to get too brown because I want the sauce to stay white. And that would be called a, like a blonde roux if it's a white 
Hey, Steph, thanks for joining us. Okay, we've made the velouté, and now we're going to make a cream sauce. Now, this you would probably make, say, if you were serving fish or if you wanted a nice gravy for your, again, a pan gravy would work well uh, for, for a poultry that you're eating. Cheese sauce. Uh, the typically you'll see a Mornay sauce, which is used on fish. Uh, if you want to make a mustard sauce, you know, anything that you want to enhance at this point in here. So we're going to add our flour in. Stir it up. That looks a little bit tighter. Okay, which is fine. We're not making as much. And I'm actually going to use this. I'm going to make a cheese sauce. And I'm going to use this tonight. I'm making a cod for dinner for my wife. I'm going to turn the heat down now to low so it doesn't burn. I want the roux to cook. I don't want it to burn. Okay. And it'll cook for a little while. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Now we're going to add in some milk, or in this case, half and half, and I did heat it because, again, I want to know how much I'm putting in. I don't want to have to re-thicken it later. I want it to, I want it to uh, be the right consistency so I don't have to play with it. I'm still looking for the bread smell, okay, and it, it really you'll, you'll kind of smell. It's not going to sound, smell like a loaf of bread, but you'll, you'll start to get that aroma of the flour cooking without it burning. And a lot of people rush this process. They mix it together, and then they just build their um, their super stock or sauce upon it. But again, it's not cooking. It's just like using a vegetable, throwing a vegetable in the boiling water for your soup. You want to let it cook a little first. You want to let it get the right flavor so it has a good finished flavor to it. Same thing with like garlic. You wouldn't put raw garlic into something and expect it to just cook in the pot. You, you have to get it to that point where it's going to be good. So we're letting the flour cook a little bit. And again, it doesn't have to be too much. It's usually about five minutes. This is a small amount. And uh, starting to come up. A lot of times you just smell the butter at first, too, which is a wonderful thing. And I use pretty much Plugara for everything, so that butter is, is nice. Do you add nutmeg to your bechamel? I do not because I don't like nutmeg, but you can. And again, it would not be necessarily for every bechamel you used. It would, I would say, use it for, uh, depending upon the dish that you make, if you wanted to have that kind of warm flavor to it. So, you know, if that's what you're making and that's a flavor you want to have in the back of your tongue, that's fine. I always tell people it's about what you like to eat, not so much about what I like to eat. So if it's something that works for you, you know, that's a great thing. Recipes are made to be adjusted, not completely followed. And that's how we find different things. And we find that we like different things. So it's experiment. Ah, nutmeg with cream spinach. Now that sounds good. Okay. See, I would probably do nutmeg and maybe a little bit of uh, Gruyere or another cheese too. in it, just a touch of taste. There you go. All right. So that's cooked enough. Now, I did heat up some half and half. Now, I'm just going to pour this in. This down so I can mix it a little better. Okay, you see the same kind of reaction we had with the stock, how it sucks it all up. Kind of looks like mashed potatoes. More in. Yes, it is. And I'm only using half and half stuff because I don't have any milk in the house and I don't have any heavy cream in the house. So uh, normally I would just use milk for this and then add a touch of heavy cream to it. And in this case, because it is kind of rich, I may end up just putting some water into it to lessen the amount of cream that's in it. So I would basically just use milk if I was making a cream sauce. And then at the very end, you can always add in a little bit of 
heavy cream if you like, sour cream, Greek yogurt. Again, it's about making a sauce that you enjoy. Yeah, I was drinking when we moved to Florida and I was retired. I was having cereal every morning. And I know that was a bad thing to begin with, that I was having cold cereal. But I was eating like a Jethro bodine size bowl of cereal. It was a huge cereal bowl. And I was drinking milk. I never used to drink that much milk. It was always a rare occasion. Well, I went to the doctor and they found out that I had a little bit of a um, dairy uh, cow milk casein intolerance. And that, I think it was because I was drinking way too much. So I'm actually going to put some water in here because I have enough of the milk solids with the cream. And in a classic bechamel, it would be all milk. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. Hey, Christine. Christine, you want to jump in? Just uh, request the seat. There we go. Christine's actually going to be doing a show with us later. So she's coming in to check everything and see how it works out. So this is basically your bechamel at this point. It's done. I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit. Hi there. Hi, Christine. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm sorry. I'm just out of the gym, so I look a mess, but I was excited. I had to catch your show. I'm glad you did. And, you know, in any event, you look better than I do, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're happy to see you. So we're just making today. I'm going through the mother sauces. This is my basic class. And last week we made a red sauce. Today is a bechamel and a um, velouté. I actually just made the velouté and with some potatoes. And then this is the allegedly all milk bechamel. But I did put a little water in it because I'm using half and half today. Tricky. <laughs> I know. I, I, but uh, in, in theory, those are the two mother sauces. But in actuality... I kind of blend them together every time I make them. I start with stock, I end with cream. Uh, I like or, what you said though. If, if you if you like something, you use it, and if you don't, you just kind of omit it. Like like I was right. saying, I, I don't do dairy, I don't do a lot of animal proteins, so right. I make a vegan version, or you you leave out the nutmeg. It's it's what you prefer. Absolutely, and it's it's that adaptable. I, you know, I was saying you can use oil. What do you use to make your roux? A lot of times I'll blend cauliflower or potatoes. I'll thicken things with things like arrow starch, mm -hmm. uh, arrowroot flour for some people. It's kind of like cornstarch, except a lot of these cornstarches have, uh, you know, GMO warnings. And just to avoid that, I go with the, with the arrowroot starch. Absolutely. You know, I never knew what arrowroot was back in the 60s. That's when I first learned about it. Yeah. And there was a guy called Graham Kerr who was from Australia. He was an Aussie and he did a lot of cooking and he thickened everything up with arrowroot. He just said it was a little more temperature sensitive than cornstarch. This is true. I've used it in uh, a stroganoff I made and I left it on too hot and it, I'm eating the stroganoff and I'm getting these jelly lumps and yeah. they're not that appetizing. <laughs> yeah, they're not bad for you. They're just not that appetizing. Exactly. So we're going to push this over the limit with even a little bit more dairy because my bechamel is done. It's a cream sauce for no other name other than it is the uh, flour and butter roux com complex mm -hmm. combined with milk in it. So now I'm going to make it into a cheese sauce and I'm just going to dump this in because I'm not actually eating this tonight, but my wife is going to have it. I'm having a salad because I put on about seven pounds last week, and I've got to come. They've got to come off. I went away to San Francisco to Los Angeles and ate terribly. Even though I was at a healthy conference, I just my whole cycle was off. Eating on the plane and eating in the airport. And, uh, yeah, it's always the worst traveling. Back to. Fruit. I mean, you enjoy it, but it throws well, you, know, you off. I told him I had ordered a salad, and we had a little problem getting it, and I ended up of all places having a burger. And after I was done, I said, you know, I have to go wash my hands. I feel dirty now. <laughs> this is grease coming out of your pores. Yeah, it was good going down. But afterwards, as I sat there, I'm going, oh, what did I do? You know, but I was so hungry after they made us wait at the restaurant and there was a problem with the order. And we finally had to leave and go somewhere else. 
So oh, okay. had to eat. <sighs> gotta Damn. do what you gotta do. Gotta do. Just don't make a habit out of it. Right. I'm like Mary Poppins. I carry a purse with snacks in it all the time. But when you fly, that's not always easy. I mean, little snacks, but we needed to eat. We needed to eat some of my like, wife, especially. I could see her eyes starting to glaze over, and it was time to feed her. Getting hangry? Hangry, yeah. And I, it, I get that. Not a happy camper. Worse than me when I'm hungry. So this was our white sauce recipe. Uh, this is our uh, cooking 101, the basics. We did bechamel. We did the roux. And we did a cream, uh, cream soup for you. And that's it. And it was all under a half an hour. So these are all things you guys can make at home. Uh, this is something you can do to enhance how you live. And I, like I said, and uh, Ed was asking too about using uh, different milks. And I said, yeah, they work fine. Uh, I said, there's a culinary coconut cream now, I believe. That, uh, there is. So, so delicious uh, is the brand? Yes. Yes. That's really good. And, and I do, just so you know, I do use Earth Balance too. Ooh. A vegan approved delight. <laughs> yes. And I like it. You do? I do. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I don't, you know, when I'm cooking something like this and I'm making it for my wife, I don't always use it. But if I'm using butter, that's butter for me now. That's fine. Yeah. And I pretty much stopped drinking milk. Uh, so it's rare that I have that. I do still like my cheese, though. So I started making a vegan cheese. It's sliceable and shreddable. So one day I'll have to... <laughs> I'll have to do that for you guys. That'd be good on a recipe here. So we are, you yeah. see how easy this is to do, how, how to join Blab now. So we're going to be making one of your wonderful desserts. Looking forward to it. Okay. Uh, find something that's not so loud. Sometimes I get carried away with a Vitamix. <laughs> well, that's all right. We can just mute you while your Vitamix is running. Good call. That's fine, too. I mean, I, I will do it. Like, normally I have Susan Sarah in here with me. And if I have to mute myself, she just keeps talking then while I'm muted doing something because I'll pull the blender out or a food processor out or whatever piece of equipment I'm using so they can right. get loud. But this was it. This was a great. Anybody have any questions for us before we go? Watch it on replay. Uh, please tell a little bird about it and uh, come back and see us tomorrow. I will be here making a skillet jambalaya. And I have my crayfish defrosting as we speak. So <laughs> I'll be making up some deliciousness for you tomorrow. Uh, what temp? Okay, this was uh, what when you make when you melt the butter and add the flour to it, you want to keep it on a low. It's a low temperature. And as you add your hot liquid to it, again, a low temperature It's pretty much staying low the whole time because it's going to continue to thicken and say I, I'm not eating this right now. And I put it aside when I come back to it later to reheat it, it's going to be pretty thick and solid. So I'm going to probably end up adding a little bit more water to it. I'm not going to put any more dairy in it at this point because you really don't need, like I was saying, when I made my soup, it's all stock and I just put a little bit of dairy in it at the end, change the texture, the color, the mouthfeel. And that's all I'm really using for. I would never make a sauce out of all milk anymore in the old days. Yeah, but not anymore. Live and learn, live and learn, adapt. It's all about adapting. There you this, go. Yeah, this is how I would make mac and cheese uh, if you wanted to go this way. Any more, you know, I make it in, when I do make it, I make it right in the pot and I use the craft philosophy. I put butter and milk in the pan with the noodles and I add some shredded cheese to it and just do it all there. I don't go to, I don't make sauces. My wife doesn't like macaroni and cheese with a sauce. So it's all about keeping her happy. So happy wife, a happy life. I know. No, I don't eat Kraft macaroni and cheese. I'm saying I make it like, the, <laughs> like I would be making it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for coming. Christine, you have any other questions? Are you good, you think? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm looking forward to whipping up a dessert with you. And for anyone watching, if you want to find out about some of my desserts, uh, check out Welly Desserts. We're on Instagram and Twitter. It's w e l l i desserts dot com. That's Wellness Innovation. So looking forward to it. And you can type that in the comment section if you want. And leave the link for them. Oh well, I think I'll do that. I want to intrude, but no, yeah, no. check it out. And let me uh, share this while you're in here, because the nice thing about these is, is when you tell a little bird when the people are in there, they are listed on Twitter. So. That's that's it. So as people come in and come out, the names change to uh, to what you're tweeting out. So that's that's a nice way to get more, get more awareness of you out. So oh, well, that's nice, and you can all see me sans makeup. I'm sorry. Hey. Um, 
<laughs> All right. Well, um, that's it for today then. And I'll, I'll talk to you later about when and figure out a time when you can come on. Sounds great. Have a great day, everyone. I'll see you all later. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.